Estate Sale Adventures number 151, Upper St. Clair. This exceptional abode built in 1986 is listed as a Charleston colonial revival, but also had some Second Empire Victorian features. The aesthetic value of this place was off the chart and looked like a confection you could almost eat. And I just love the brickwork. The icing on the cake was the ornamental Coppola turret, fully equipped with a weather vane. How could you not get total Hocus Pocus vibes? But unfortunately, this one was not as functional. More of a fancy skylight than anything else. But this only scratches the surface. The first thing I fell in love with was the study. The beautiful desk with the green leather and claw feet was right up my alley. The main living room space had a nice wainscot and arched doorways which led out to an impressive in-ground pool in the backyard. I'm getting the impression that this home was built for entertaining. And cue the over-the-top bar in the basement. I mean, this game room space was legit. Plenty of space for the pool table and definitely much more. Also, the master bedroom was outright enormous. Had a very nice bedroom set, and I love the dresser. So here's something new I learned. The Ladro Porcelain, a Spanish-based company which creates these statues, are pretty collectible. I've never heard of them before, but apparently they've been featured in all kinds of movies and TV series. Look up Will and Grace, Season 7, Episode 12, concerning Weijin, the bashful geisha. Little bits of history, like this old newspaper with the protective cover, always catch my eye. This one in particular was of the Boston Evening Transcript from January 3rd, 1922. Thanks for coming on this adventure with me. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Estate Sale Adventures, number 152, Shadyside. Heads up, this was an extremely special house and sale in the heart of Shadyside. This converted carriage house was part of a larger estate at the corner of Ellsworth and Moorwood. Learning this when I arrived, my interest was piqued and I had to do some digging. My first stop is the Pittsburgh Historic Map website, where I found this 110-year-old rendering of the original mansion with the corresponding carriage house that still stands today. I couldn't find an image of the house, and trust me, I looked, and there was no street view in 1910. But I did learn the owner's name, who luckily had a Wikipedia page. J.M. Schoonmaker was born in Peebles Township, north of Pittsburgh, went to Pitt, enlisted in the Union Army, earned the rank of Colonel and the Medal of Honor, and also made a fortune in the Coke and banking industries. He was even buried in Homewood Cemetery, a Pittsburgher through and through, I suppose. Now back to the sale. I guess I created a lot of buildup, but for good reason. There were so many turn-of-the-century finds mixed with kitschy and bizarre things from every decade. The ephemera and miscellaneous pieces were vast and varied, as you can see. Plenty of porcelain, brass, and glass that you'd see at any sale. But it's the things I've never seen before that always get me excited. For instance, this first family commemorative plate from the Dwight D. Eisenhower administration this painted porcelain breakfast tray was very ornate and beautiful. I tried to translate the German, but I gave up. These busts are on a typical find in sales, and I just love this last one. The table with the smalls is always worth looking at, and these black lacquer and mother of pearl boxes were very stylish, really caught my eye. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is used for making pasta. This isn't the first time I've seen a cookie jar collection, nor is it the biggest. And of course, there was dark stained furniture, which I fell in love with, most of all was the small end table with the two drawers and the original key. Just beautiful. The jadeite sculptures were plentiful, but I honestly don't know anything about them. More research is definitely required. But by far, the most interesting and unique collection was the early glasses and spectacles. A definite first. The ones that really caught my eye were the sunglasses. I would definitely have bought and wear them, but my head is far too big. The last thing I want to show you is the art most of which were framed printed illustrations of cats, children, and many other subjects. They all seem to have a similar aesthetic. This one is an illustration of a character named Dottie Dimple from the Little Prudy series. And this bizarre print shows a rather outmoded way of depicting the average woman's life cycle. Interesting that they depict midlife as all in black. Kind of regret not grabbing this. My only purchase was this brass key hook that I found in the laundry room. If anyone knows what the figure depicts, please comment below. Shout out to Judy from JD Llama for the lovely sale. And look up next week's sales on pghestatesales.com. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and find me on Etsy. Estate Sale Adventures, number 153, Gibsonia. Located on the border between the townships of Pine and Richland, my old stomping grounds north of Pittsburgh, is this very unique home and property. Something struck me about this piece of land, which prompted a little research. It was once owned by the McClintock family, who had migrated from Ireland to Allegheny City in 1822. They later settled north near what is now Springhouse Lane in Gibsonia to farm the land and raise several generations of their progeny. 
property sold the farm in 1864, and since then the parcel has been divided up into multiple residential properties with the turnpike overpass to boot, but remnants of the farm still remain. The house in question for today's sale was built much later, 1968 to be specific, with a kind of Germanic Bavarian feel. The aesthetic quality of this home and the unique finds within were definitely exceptional. Very colorful, very eclectic, and with a coherent style. I would love to meet the person who lived here, mainly because of the plethora of musical instruments. This Schwechten upright piano is an extremely rare find. When the original owner passed in 1902, the brand fizzled out and eventually was bought by a Chinese company. Just look at the fixture on that candle holder. And the collection didn't stop there. We found several harps, an accordion, flutes, clarinets, and probably a dozen different kinds of guitars. Some pristine, others in need of some TLC. There was also an amazing variety of different string instruments, adjacent to violins and violas, but not the standard sizes or shapes. The interesting instruments bled into indigenous and native artifacts. Again, so much history. But trust me, the finds did not stop there. And here's a first. This birth atlas was delicate and in disrepair, but had exceptional illustrations. There was also a collection of nautical maps, and I mean the really, really big kind. I've honestly never even looked at a map of Antigua before. In keeping with that theme are these ancient port and starboard oil lamps. And another first, a Kikiyu Simu fighting sword made from a car spring. And before ending, I have to mention the boat. It was made by the previous owner and was apparently used in the 1960 film Swiss Family Robinson. Shout out to Turnkey for the amazing sale. Check out pghsstatesales.com each week for the upcoming sales. And thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and find me on Etsy. Estate Sale Adventures, weekend of May the 15th. Number 154 in Plum, done by LA, was a very cute home with some interesting features. The first thing to catch my eye was the Technicolor mosaic stained glass lighting fixture in the entryway. Not to be outdone by the chandelier, dated in the best way possible. Being dated isn't a bad thing. Just look at this wallpaper. The backyard was very cute, but look at this. Now I'm gonna need to replace all of my spaghetti handles. My favorite finds were the spider plant mirror in the basement and this exceptional soapstone sculpture lamp. Number 155 in Duquesne was more of a downsizing sale, but I had to include it because of these vintage couches. The first one was a leather chase, very MCM, and this long green one with the claw feet and wood details was almost mine. And I am a bit of a sucker for tacky lawn art. Number 156 in Glenshaw was a pretty interesting sale. There was religious devotional art, some very nice antique furniture pieces, a beautiful art deco floor lamp, these interesting dried fungi painted with butterflies, and of course, this guy. But this sale had something in the basement that was simultaneously amazing and bizarre. An alphabetized catalog of magazine and newspaper clippings organized by subject. What you're seeing is only a fraction of the collection. It was meticulous and a sight to behold. And of course, I grabbed a few. This is why I go to sales. You'll never know what you'll find. Number 157 was the Turnkey Warehouse in Tarentum, one of my favorites. It's completely different each time you go. There was a collection of vintage signed pirate 8x10s, these very nice indigenous ceramic art pieces, and a sizable number of toys and board games from another decade. They had the Toyland Express model train, the Mr. Potato Head on the Railroad playset, and the board games included the Waltons, Voice of the Mummy, and the classic Mousetrap. This vintage Coleman cooler had some wear and tear, but a lot of charm. And I recommend everyone look out for recipe books and boxes like this one. Make sure you look up pghestatesales.com to see what's coming up this weekend. And thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and find me on Etsy. Estate Sale Adventures, number 158, Greenfield. The morning started with a quick stop in Greenfield. It was more of a downsizing or moving sale. And even though it didn't have the breadth of finds that most sales do, it was still worth it. Plus, the house itself was pretty charming. The predominant find here were the small glass and porcelain pieces of every variety. I have plenty of knickknacks and trinkets. I don't need any more. But I am almost always drawn to perfume bottles. I'm not really sure why. There was a smattering of antiques though, including this flatware, a well-used sugar tin, this vintage dog puzzle, and this original Raggedy Ann and Andy painting from the 1970s. I did buy this adorable ceramic seal for a friend and took a second look at this gold leather jacket. But my real test was when I saw the living room furniture in the garage. My grandparents had the same exact couch. I felt very nostalgic. But anyway, 
Moving on to number 159 in Dormont, this sale was a special one. First off, this craftsman style house was insanely beautiful, but had one flaw. Someone decided to put black varnish on all the interior wood. A mortal sin, in my opinion. Aside from that, the home was exceptionally charming, with all of its original stained glass intact. There was enough Asian finds to fill 10 households, as well as other collections. Yes, of course there were creepy dolls, but there were also model sail ships, these painted porcelain reliefs, and a very nice secretary desk. Upon leaving, I learned from somebody working the sale that the previous owner had created these beautiful installation art pieces in the yard. The shape is a quatrefoil, an ancient symbol for good luck, like a four-leaf clover. And don't worry, there's more to come. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and find me on Etsy. Estate Sale Adventures, number 160, Bethel Park. Done by Prestige Estate Sales, this sale had a lot of unique finds, and I ended up wanting to purchase, like, everything, including the mailbox. And before getting started, I have to mention the in-ground pool. It made me feel some type of way. The first impressive find inside the house was this massive buffet, and from there, it just got better. One thing that stood out was the decor in certain rooms. Lots of wood on the walls, ceiling, and floors. And in the basement was this homemade faux stained glass lighting fixture, the kind that goes over a pool table. And here's the first, this bizarre snowman gag gift. Now, if you're going to go to estate sales, you will always see China, but this one had them all. They had the Avon Christmas set, the classic blue etchings, and of course, florals. Now, here's where things get dangerous. I absolutely fell in love with this brass elk. And of course, I went back and looked at him several times. And to top it off, there was this beautiful hall table that matched perfectly. Before moving on, take a moment to appreciate this small music box. Can you identify the song? Estate Sale Adventures, number 161, Upper St. Clair. So Judy at JD Llama somehow gets these sales over and over that are always so special and have those one-of-a-kind finds. And this fabulous custom mansion did not disappoint. I fell in love with the decorative leather chair and ottoman set, the crystal votives, the lighting fixtures, this fabulous art deco decanter, the bronze sculpture, this rustic wood bowl set, and of course, the functioning antique Coca-Cola bottle vending machine. The icing on the cake with this one was that it was manufactured in Steubenville. And when I say functioning, I mean it worked and it was cold. And not even inches away was this incredible red leather game table. I'm kind of dying right now. I just love that embossed gold look. And lastly, the find to end all finds. Two original signed Salvador Dali prints and they kept the original packaging too. If I had the extra cash to play with, I wouldn't have thought twice. And guess what? For once, I didn't completely hate the requisite china at this sale. So if this doesn't motivate you to get up on a Saturday morning and join me, I have no idea what will. Be sure to check out pghestatesales.com for this weekend sales. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and find me on Etsy.